Hey everybody, in this video we're going to talk about how to read a stack trace. Um, so this has probably happened to you already, and if not, it will soon, where you know, you're going along, working on your MP, and at some point you go to run the test cases and something's broken. Um, and maybe everything's broken. Um, and one of the things I want to point out here as we get started is when you do run the test cases in Android Studio and things are failing, um, how they fail will be reflected in this bit of UI over here on the left. So um, I've made a, a change to the MP0 starter code that's going to cause all the tests to fail. And you'll see when you see this red icon with an exclamation point, that indicates that your app crashed. Now, crashes are not good. When I install, like if you install a new app on your phone and you click on it to open it and the first thing it does is crash, the next thing I do, straight to the trash. I mean, you know, an app that crashes is typically not one that users are going to, to, to use. And this red icon indicates that, that the app crashed. When you see the orangish, yellowish looking icon with the slightly different, I think it's like a cross in, in the middle, that indicates that the test failed, meaning that your app ran and didn't crash, it just didn't do what we wanted it to. But when it crashes, you see this red icon, and this is not good. Now, when a crash happens on most in most programming environments, and we'll talk a little bit in a minute about other places you might see this, but you're, you're frequently one of the most important pieces of information you get is something called an exception stack trace. And that's what I'm looking at right here down, down at the bottom. So I'm gonna pull this up so we can see a little bit more of this. What is a stack trace? So a stack trace represents the series of method calls from the time the app started running until the point it crashed. And so this gives you kind of like all of the steps that the app took until the point where something bad happened and the app crashed. Um, usually stack traces are formatted so the most recent calls are at the top and the oldest calls are at the bottom. And so you'll see here, for example, that you know the, the bottom part of the stack trace is typically not very useful because these are calls that were made by like the testing framework. So this series of calls in the stack trace was made by RoboElectric, which is the testing framework that we use to test your app. Now, at the top, sometimes you'll also see some, so you'll see these are grayed out. These are grayed out. You can still click on these, but the reason they're gray is that this is code that's not part of your project. The blue links are links to code that is part of your project, and those are clickable. We're gonna use those in a minute to understand what happened. What steps did our app take before the crash occurred? At the top of the stack trace, however, so in this case, the null pointer exception actually happened in a Java standard library. So this is in java.util.objects. And when this happens, when you're using like a popular, in this case, a library that's actually built right into Java. It's usually not a problem with the library. So, you know, don't go and file a bug report against java.util.objects because that's not where the problem is. It's almost always how we're using that library code that caused the problem. We did something wrong, right? There's something wrong with our code. Now, maybe you're using a brand new library or something that you found on, on GitHub to help you with another project. And in that case, you know, if this kind of thing happens and it, and it feels like you're doing the right thing, you might want to file a bug on GitHub and, and get some help or at least report it in case it is a problem with the library. But in this case, this is java.util. Pretty sure it's pretty well tested. My hypothesis is this is my fault, right? Something about my app is wrong. I want to figure out what. So let's start uh, uh, using the stack trace. And so these calls essentially give us breadcrumbs, kind of, in terms of how we got to the line of code that crashed. And I'm gonna take us there step by step. Usually what you're gonna do is you're just gonna click right on this line here and get to the place where the problem happened, look at that line and try to figure out what went wrong. And we'll do that in a second. But I wanna, you know, let's, let's just take the journey together. So we started off in onCreate. This was called as part of the application class, and this happens when we start up our app. This is always called. You'll see that I'm on line 43 because the next thing that happened was I called server.start. And so now let's click here. And so in server.start, I then created a new server instance. So that took me into server.init. You'll see here, this is the constructor, basically. When you see this dot, you know, bracket init, this is the constructor. So I'm in my private constructor for the server class, and now I called load restaurants. And now I'm getting closer. So now I'm, I'm gonna click on this, and now I'm actually at the line where the failure took place. So this is the line of the, the last line of code 
that my program executed before it crashed, before it had this null pointer exception. So I should have pointed that out before. At the top of the stack trace, when there is a failure, is the reason, what happened. So in this case, it's a null pointer exception. So I have some sense of what I'm looking for here. Essentially, something was null that shouldn't have been null. Sometimes this will be an array index out of bounds exception, or a list index out of bounds exception, or a number formatting exception. There's also different things that could have happened. But you know, essentially, this is the problem. There was something that was null that shouldn't have been null, and the stack trace indicates how we got it. All right, so now I'm at uh, server.java line 111, and the next couple lines in the stack trace are, you'll see scanner.init, so this is actually in the scanner class for Java. Um, and just as brief aside, scanner is one of the worst pieces of Java. Uh, there's a lot of good parts of Java. Scanner is not a good part of Java. So anyway, I couldn't, I can't look at scanner without, I have some bad memories. I have some bad memories with scanner. Scanner and I have tangled in the past. Um, anyway, so, uh, so this goes into the scanner constructor and then at some point it calls objects that require not null and apparently whatever was passed to that was null because at that point the object, the, the, the program crashed. Now, when you have a null pointer exception, I'm gonna show you another example of this in just a sec. Frequently the line, if the last line is in your code, it means that you literally tried to dereference null. In this case, the last line in the stack trace is not in our code. It leads into a library call. And what that indicates is that something else went wrong. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna go back to server.java line 111. We're gonna look really carefully at this. And we're gonna to try to figure out like what could be the problem. And essentially what happened here is that I passed something to the scanner constructor that caused it to fail. And if I look at this carefully, what I'm going to see in IntelliJ is actually trying to help me here, um, or Android Studio is trying to help me, is that, uh, yeah, so the, the name of the file is restaurants.csv, and I have just, you know, sometimes we call this fat fingering. Like, I've just misspelled it. Um, and this happens, you know, like sometimes, you know, I have a cat that works with me sometimes and sometimes she like rolls back onto the keyboard and starts just pressing buttons and random characters appear in my code in various places. So, so I'm going to drop this, this, what this I think is the problem. Let's, uh, let's run just this test again, uh, and go ahead and just run this guy, um, and, and see what happens. Right. But, but I, I suspect now that I'm going to have fixed this problem. And so this is how to use a stack trace during debugging. There's a lot of really useful information in there. Probably the two most useful pieces of information that you should look at first are what happened. So in this case, a null pointer exception. And then what was the last line of code in your project that was executed? Because again, if, if, if the stack trace leads into you know, java.util.list or something like that, that's not the code you want to look at. That code works, right? What happened is you did something wrong uh, about that. And now you can see that this, this passes, so, so I'm good. Let me show you an example of a, of a null pointer exception triggered directly by our code. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, you know, just throw um, a null object in here, and then I'm gonna try to print um, Cool, okay, so let's try to run this out. And now IntelliJ, you know, sorry, I keep calling it IntelliJ, Android Studio, is helpful here, and one of the things that you should do is you should always look at these um, look at these warnings, right? Because Android Studio, in this case, knows more than Java does about what's about to happen. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hold on, this is null and it's going to crash, but I'm going to do it anyway because you know maybe I think I know more than Android Studio. So I'm going to run this test case, and what I'm expecting to happen here is I'm expecting to see a null pointer exception, but in this case, the stack trace is going to actually lead all the way to the top of the stack trace is gonna be a line in my own code. I expect it to be, again, line 111, right? Because that's where I'm using this null reference, right? I set it to null and I'm gonna call hash code and I expect this to, to, to blow up, right? This will cause a crash. And as promised, it does. And, and again, I see the whole sequence of events, how we got here. So we, uh, when, when RoboElectric, our testing framework, started the app, the onCreate method was called, it called server.start, that called the private constructor, the private constructor called load restaurants, and I ended up at 111, which is where the crash happened. And again, I've got a null pointer exception uh, right here. So, so these stack traces are, you know, first of all, this is not a Java specific or a Kotlin specific or an Android specific thing. Stack traces are generated pretty much by every sane programming language and framework when the app crashes or when something goes wrong. And there's a lot of information here and by looking at them, it's like a, it, this is like a clue, right? Sometimes debugging is like 
being an investigator, right? Like, you know, someone gave you, it's like, okay, here's, here's what the suspect did, you know, the, the night before the whatever bad thing happened, right? And it's a series of steps. And by using this information, you can figure out more about exactly what happened before the app crashed. Frequently, if you take what happened, in this case, a null pointer exception, and then the line number, in this case, 111, and just go to that line, you know, now again, obviously this is a silly example because I set foo to null and you can see that on line 110, but in general, like foo might be something you were expecting not to be null, which is why you felt free to dereference it here. And it turned out it was null. But on this line, it's like, what dereference do I see here that could potentially be problematic? The only thing I'm dereferencing that I'm not sure about is foo. And so foo is null. And I now know that. I know that foo is null at this point in my program. And now I got to think why, right? There might be some, you know, typically knowing that something is null is a big hint, right? Because then you have to figure out, well, how did it get null or why didn't it wasn't initialized or whatever? And that can lead you in the right direction. Um, but reading these stack traces, whether you work in Python, TypeScript, Go, you know, Haskell, whatever, I mean, stack traces are something that you're going to encounter as part of your uh, life as a software creator and learning how to understand them and gain useful information from reading and processing them is a tremendously valuable skill.